think we'll go in here. Yeah, it works. Uh, yes, my name is Wally Akins. As Mike uh, said earlier, I'm a small game biologist for our agency. And uh, I want to talk about today some of our shortleaf pine restoration we've done as part of a NIFWIF grant. Uh, I'm simply the messenger here because we've had a lot of folks that have assisted on this project. Uh, namely, the Nature Conservancy is a major partner in, this, in the grant. Um, Trish Johnson and Alex Weiss both, both work for TNC in Tennessee and they could not be here this week. Alex is going to the NIFWIF stakeholders meeting in Nashville uh, this week. But um, starting out, you know, our state is a very diverse state. We've got nine or ten uh, geographic provinces, uh, and, and not only are we diverse biologically or ecologically, but also socially and culturally. Um, if you're from the east in the Ridge and Valley or the, the Blue Ridge, it's actually, you could be considered or could have been a different state than the middle and western part of, of our state. Um, our language is different, dialect's different, those folks in Memphis, you can't even understand what they're saying usually, but, uh, but, um, but anyway, um, very diverse. We're also very ecologically diverse. We've got 325 species of fish, 460 species of mollusk, which is number one in the nation. We've got 90 mammals, 60 reptiles, 70 amphibians, um, around 350 bird species that either migrate or reside in our state. Um, we have the highest density of caves, uh, 3,800 uh, caves to, in our state, so very diverse. We've got um, 2,300 species of plants, of herbaceous plants. We've had some botanists tell us that there's probably a lot more on the plateau that's never been described, so that number could increase. Um, out of all this, we've got uh, over 660 species of greatest conservation needs, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of things happening in our state. Our Tennessee forest, are, we've got about 14 million acres. To give you a little background uh, before I talk about our project, 89% um, of these forests are hardwoods. They're owned primarily by the private forest landowner, which own about 80% of our forest. 16% um, is in public lands. Uh, and the rest is in uh, corporate ownership. We've got about a million acres of loblolly shortleaf component, a million acres of oak pine forest. Um, I, I should have said too, the 14 million acres covers about 52% of our land cover type. Now, that number is held true for the last 60 years, since 1940. We've had that much of forest cover in our state. The biggest difference, as in most states, um, we've had a, a, a tremendous decline in, in early successional forest. Uh, we've got two and a half, and I think more than that, uh, less of early successional forest now as we did in the, in the 70s. So, you know, what does this mean? That, that should, uh, regarding shortleaf, that sh could suggest we've got fewer shortleaf stands in that early successional uh, stage um, that's it's not going to be f to replace the next generation of shortleaf. Also in these mature forests it could mean that these forests are simply too shaded to to um, to favor the generation of those sun-loving tree species and, and actually favor those mesovitic type species. We do have shortleaf in our state. Um, you can walk on any ridge top, Zerk site, southwest facing slope and find one, just about anywhere you go. Um, we also have evidence of, you know, extensive coverage of this forest type, uh, especially on the Cumberland Plateau. If you want to know about the history of the plateau, you can talk to Clarence Coffey. He has documented a tremendous amount of information, but um, not only the anthropogenic uh, activity of Native Americans and European settlers, but there's a, a tremendous amount of documentation for things like tar and turpentine uh, production across the plateaus, which lends itself to shortleaf pine. The late 80s and also the early 90s, we had records of 
red cockaded woodpecker on Catoosa, WMA, and also in Polk County, which is in the very so southeastern part of the state. Over the range of short leaf, if you look at the FIA data, there's been a 50, over a 50% decline range-wide. In Tennessee, we've had uh, more of a decline between 60 and 65%. In Tennessee, we've had several, or we've had a lot of short-leaf pine projects going on over the last 25 or 30 years um, all across the state. We've got projects uh, scattering out in West Tennessee of shortleaf pine. Well, we've had projects going on on WMAs like Cheatham, WMA, uh, Pea Ridge, WMA, uh, Catoosa. Um, Foothills WMA has got a, a, a pretty large project going on. They're going to have about 1,200 acres when they get done. It's in the eastern part of the state. Places like North Cumberland uh, and Prentice Cooper near, down near Chattanooga. So we've got a lot of things, or have had a lot of things, regarding short leaf going on with our agency. Along about four years ago, we entered into our first grant, and we've been working with two grants over the last four years with the Forest Stewardship Stewards Initiative Program. Um, the money is coming from International Paper and administered by the National Fish and Wildlife Fed uh, Foundation. A lot of you are familiar with these grants, but they have identified across the range of shortleaf three or four different places they'd like to restore and enhance and protect um, wildlife habitat to benefit a wide range of species and different populations. Uh, on the plateau itself, we're using our grants to uh, springboard shortleaf pine restoration on the, plateau, on the plateau to achieve around 2,200 acres of shortleaf restoration and also uh, a, a big important part is to uh, raise awareness and raise the profile of shortleaf pine on the plateau. The way we've ate this elephant is several different ways. We've um, identified areas that we want to enhance shortleaf pine, mostly by natural regeneration techniques. Um, we've found that, you know, you get the biggest bang for your buck by uh, basically cutting and burning. Um, so we've done a lot of that, and I'll, I'll uh, address each of these issues more specifically as I go on. Uh, but we've also used artificial regeneration by planting shortleaf pine, and also uh, our big part of our, our our grant activity has been into outreach and public education, public awareness, and also education of resource professionals. Um, and also we've assisted in some research projects that's been going on uh, that I'll talk about a little later. But, you know, mainly we want to learn how to manage either, you know, mixed stands of pine hardwood by planting or retaining the seed source uh, of existing shortleaf pine trees, and in some places it's hard to find in Tennessee. Like I said, you know, you walk in places where you think shortleaf should be and you find one, um, literally. So it, it's hard to find a, those areas that have at least a, a, a fairly decent cohort of shortleaf pine in the stand. They're out there, but you just have to find them. This grant, the little sections in red, and I know in the back you probably can't see this, but these are some of our major uh, study areas. Uh, most of these are on public lands, um, whether they're WMAs, state parks, or state forest, or experimental forest, um, ran or controlled by the university. We also do work with private landowners. Um, we've got a couple of landowners, particularly, that we have worked with uh, that I'll mention here shortly. Major part of our study area, or our, I'm sorry, our project area is on Catoosa WMA. It's a, an 80,000 acre WMA just north of Crossville. This area right here in the center that is in yellow is uh, what we call our savanna area. This area was uh, severely impacted by a uh, pine beetle outbreak in the late 1990s, 2000. It's about 3,800 acres total of 
of an area that the agency went in and salvage cut uh, at the time of the outbreak as much as they could, that is. Um, and what has resulted by happenstance is has been a pretty nice looking savanna. Out of that uh, 3,800 acres, there's about 1,500 acres that are uh, dominated by the pine, uh, shortly pine component. The rest are in a mixed pine, hardwood, or an oak savanna. But we've been working on that. Another area on Catoosa is up here in the upper left. It's on the west side. It looks like the state of Tennessee or a boat. That was an area that a tornado came through in 2011. Uh, we've done a salvage cut, um, pretty much wiped it out, but we just piggybacked on that uh, and thought that, that was a good place to um, do some restoration. If there was any short leaf in the stand, we left it, but they did cut out any, uh, or salvage cut any hardwoods in the stand. Also on the left of that, the far west little corner are some of our planting sites. Uh, just north of this is another thousand acres that we've identified as an area that we're thinning and burning. Um, we've thinned about 300 acres of that. Um, we've had a hold up or a, it's a slower process to get some thinning done because of our markets right now. So our, lo our contracts have been let out. Loggers are having trouble selling timber, so they're taking their time or it's taken them longer to cut that. We did do some underplanting here in this area uh, this last year, uh, planting short leaf underneath a thinned hardwood stand. So that results will come of that later. The other area, our, our WMA, is the Bridgestone Firestone. WMA, it's about 20,000 acres near Sparta, Tennessee. Um, most of this area is dominated by either some open areas uh, mostly deciduous hardwood. It's kind of intersected by the Caney Fork River drainage, which is you're on a plateau and you drop off into a deep escarpment to the river. But all this in yellow is some lands that we acquired in 2008 from um, Bowwater Corporation. Bowwater is a, a forest industry, so all of this area is planted in loblolly pine plantations of various age groups. Um, when we first got it, our youngest stand was three years old, the oldest being 30 years old, but it's an all different type of age grouping uh, in this yellow area. Now, before this even grant, we started trying to thin these areas with fire, and since then, as stands become mature enough for a commercial harvest, we either thin or clear cut these areas. Also, we worked on Cummins Fall State Park. I didn't have a shape file of it, but it's up here, a little old 200 acre state park in Jackson County. So, um, fire, you know, is a major part of short leaf pine restoration. We've tried to use fire in a lot of different areas. Uh, we burned over 3,000 acres as part of this, this grant. We burned a lot more as an agency but uh, pertaining to this grant, we burned 3,000 acres in the last three or four years. We've used it in multiple locations on different um, WMAs and in different cover types. Some of it's thinned hardwood, some of it's thin pine, some of it's clear cut areas. Some of it is the old pine beetle stands that have pines already there, but we've used fire to enhance those stands and to try to favor those species of pine, of, of, um, of those early successional or those desirable tree species. Um, we've tried to influence our stocking rates uh, and also that structural diversity which comes along with burning. We have planted some short leaf. I mentioned artificial regeneration. Uh, we've planted about 700 acres. Most of this has been on WMAs. However, about 100 acres have been on private lands. Um, we've done mechanical site prep mostly with um, heavy equipment, dozers and such, or we have come in and simply planted immediately after a clear cut or a thinning. And we've just, you know, taken the chance, saving some money, 
we felt like the, the logging activity had scarcified the ground enough that we were able to go in and plant. Um, our plantings have done well, uh, but we have had to do some chemical release and hardwood control on a couple of those sites. Uh, just felt like they were getting a little bit overtopped, uh, so we come in with mostly some an arsenal, I mean, arsenal or triclopyr combination. I do want to mention our plantings briefly because I, I will acknowledge that containerized seedlings are probably better, but we've had we've planted. Uh, uh, one off bare root seedlings on all of our sites and we've had pretty decent survival. Um, some years are better than others. Uh, we do a quality check the day they're planting and also immediately after the uh, planting crew leaves um, do some spacing, uh, uh, checking the spacings, checking the number of seeds we have, uh, our seedlings we have and also but we, our real survival check is done after the first growing season. So uh, we wait till a couple of frost hit, some of that vegetation browns up and we can see our pines better, but you know, average of, like I said, of 65%. Now, in previous, uh, the literature, you know, a lot of this is based on seedling quality and I would agree with that, but also um, care of planting, we think is a major part of planting these trees, especially if you're using bare root seedlings, um, we'll have good survival uh, across that stand. But when we get to those areas where it seems like that was the part of the uh, stand that was planted later in the day, or the second, or the last day of the, the planting crew, our survival ability drops. So you know maybe the crew's getting tired; they're getting a little bit sloppy on how they're planting. Um, so uh, that may impact your survival somewhat. So um, we'll wait and see what it looks like this coming year after, oh, pretty soon we'll be checking. Um, social uh, outreach and education is a big thing we've been doing. We've used social media. I took some pictures and took some notes of Chris's uh, presentation because I'd like to do the things that he's doing. Uh, but we've not Twittered and tweeted, but we have used Facebook uh, as our social media outlet. We uh, uh, simply post things on either our, the Nature Conservancy or TWRA's Facebook pages. Everybody seems to like it. Um, you know, we get a lot of, of comments coming back. Um, we're currently working on some interpretive signage to put up on our WMAs and also state parks. Uh, about shortleaf and woodland restoration. Uh, those are under review and in the draft stage right now, but we're going to do them in multiple languages. We feel like we've got uh, a major Hispanic uh, component, or uh, uh, a lot of Hispanic folks in, in certain areas, so we're going to make these in different languages and see how that goes. Uh, we've created posters. One of ours is in the back, and also some rack cards that we leave out. Um, and offices and just wherever we need to. Uh, we've used different things, written newspaper and magazine articles, uh, used TV, had some TV interviews. Uh, we've given several presentations to civic organizations, forestry associations, you name it, whoever will have us, we'll go talk to them. Um, we've also conducted several landowner visits. Um, and I'll mention this because I didn't have a slide and it's important, I should have made one, but we have funded the forest management plans for 8,500 acres of private lands on the plateau. And as of last year, or this year rather, 6,000 um, 6, acres of shortleaf pine restoration have been uh, the begun the implement implementation as a result of these plans. So. It's a pretty neat thing. We're also already seeing results on private lands from some of the work that we've done. We've also had five workshops. We tried to do two per year. We had to cancel one one year because of uh, weather, but uh, but a lot of our workshops we've have been very well received. As Chris was mentioning, uh, we have the same problem of lack of knowledge from our resource professional base. 
So our first workshop was for resource professionals. And we were worried that we would have enough attendance, enough interest, and uh, as res registration came down to it, we were worried about having to shut it off and how we're going to have the money to feed all the people that came to our workshops. Um, six to ten uh, agencies, not counting uh, consulting foresters, have attended our workshops. Uh, six to ten people from tho that many different agencies. We have 30 to 50 that come to each workshop. This last workshop we had in this summer, we actually limited our advertisement uh, base and just restricted it to resource professionals in the area on the Cumberland Plateau and we still had 39 people that registered. So if we had expanded our advertisement, we couldn't have accommodated everyone. Uh, but there is that knowledge but a gap that we've had um, and, and you know we've got a generation it's already been mentioned of foresters and wildlife students that's pretty much learned how to identify shortleaf and that's it so um, that's been very well received our landowner participation has also been pretty good we've had 20 to 30 landowners to attend each of our workshops and we get uh, positive feedback from these folks so uh, they're eager to learn they're eager to uh, want to know about short leaf uh, and how to do it uh, we've also assisted um, some research projects that's been going on by the University of Tennessee uh, this one has started in 2011 um, where it's a, a study that investigating the seasonality of fire and also the frequency of fire and uh, there's some pre preliminary results uh, coming up. We've had documentation of over a hundred different herbaceous plants, but we have three uh, stands that are burned in the early growing season on one, two, and three year rotations, and likewise three stands that are burned in the late growing season on one, two, and three year rotations. And uh, until yesterday, I thought besides tall timbers, uh, this was, uh, unique as uh, study area east of the Mississippi River but learning that what they're doing at Stockton University it's it's not but um, it is something stay tuned because uh, this should be a neat thing and we're going to try to keep this project going in perpetuity and keep and just see what happens over time um, our future management you know we've kind of left that wide open also depending on uh, how these stands develop initially uh, and, and depending on that is, is when we will determine how we're going to manage these stands in the future. But whatever we do, we want to have a large variety um, of, of different cover types, uh, savanna, woodland, timber production, and also mixed pine hardwood. Uh, these are demonstration sites and that's what we want them to be, demonstration sites. And, uh, you know, we want to be able to bring landowners out here, show these areas uh, to them and, and say, hey, look, do what we do and you can get this instead of doing what, instead of saying do what we say. So, um, you know, that's where we're at right now. These uh, are three or four years old. Um, so they're developing right now and, and some of them are looking pretty good. Looking forward, what's uh, you know the commitment and maintenance? Uh, number one is burning of prescribed fire, and we're burning a lot, but we are also looking for ways to increase our burn capacity uh, by developing new partnerships and uh, to increase this these areas for restoration. Also, timber harvest is a big uh, role. Uh, I don't think. Our WMAs differ too much from private lands when you talk about the maturity of the forest um, in, in, in a lot of cases. We've got some uh, closed canopy forest uh, on a lot of our WMAs that could be improved uh, at some level. And, uh, but along with timber harvest, I think the driving force with that is timber markets. Uh, in Tennessee, at least where we're at, we have fairly to to decent hardwood markets, uh, but our, our pine salt timber market is pretty much non-existent, uh, and the pulp market is, is struggling. So 
Uh, we've had quotas put on our timber cutters um, that they can take to the mills. Uh, we will uh, have a new mill that's coming up uh, online this coming year, so hopefully that's going to help out. We also want to implement some forest inventory and vegetation sampling um, on these sites and also, you know, wildlife monitoring programs like uh, uh, bats um, and other species, songbirds. We've been doing songbird surveys before and during these, these processes. We are only scratching the surface, we feel like, for the restoration on the plateau. So the opportunities are out there to expand this program, to make it bigger and larger and uh, more attractive. And, you know, so I think the way we are set up with these um, grants, it, the door's open for more partnerships to develop. And also, uh, you know, we have some interest with private landowners, but I think the benefit of these demonstration areas are to increase that ownership or that interest substantially. Substantially, um, many partners. Probably I should put some more up here than I did. Of course, um, NIFWIF and International Paper are driving forces behind this, um, and the Nature Conservancy. We've worked closely, daily, weekly together on these. But our Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, which houses our state parks have been a tremendous player, and also our Tennessee Division of Forestry under the Department of Agriculture. Um, you know, there's set, many people within each of these agencies that have contributed to this project and this, um, the whole thing that we've done. Uh, also, the University of Tennessee and our UT Extension have been major players. And with that, I'll take any questions.